be turning that on momentarily. And that means um, we will be able to post this to the website after the uh, live session today. And anybody who feels like it can go and review and see the session on our website. So uh, let's get started. I'd like to encourage all of you to uh, type your comments or your questions down in the text box um, and try to make this as interactive as possible. It's pretty impossible because it's just this talking head, me talking. But if you have any questions, uh, please stop me. I plan to go kind of fast and but that's not because I don't want to talk about things it's just trying to get all the data in so if I'm going too fast and you want more information about something just give me a shout and I'll go back and uh, review or go into more detail or answer any questions okay I'm glad you're here today and let's get started I'm going to start with some of our um, information about budget. Of course, the state budget is totally in flux at this point in time, so I have no news about that. Um, in fact, I got some news just the other day, yesterday or today in the paper. I thought that they were definitely going to fund raises for teachers, and now I'm hearing that that may not be possible. I was assuming that if uh, the state was funding raises for teachers, that that funding would come from other portions of the state, like the Department of Cultural Resources, where the State Library resides. Uh, but now that those are off the table, who knows what's going to happen. So the, the, the word there is stay tuned. I can tell you about the Library Services and Technology Act funding, and that's the federal funding that comes to libraries of all types in North Carolina through the State Library. Our allotment is about 4.1 million, and that is um, uh, designated strictly on a per capita basis. So as our population goes up, our allotment goes up. And um, what we do when we get that allotment is we divide it pretty much in half, and we use uh, about half for statewide projects that spring from the State Library. And a really good example of that is our Cardinal Project that you'll be hearing more about. Also our North Carolina P NCpedia, Online Encyclopedia. We use it to that, those funds to support our continuing education program and some other things. So um, th those are projects that come out of the State Library. We use the other half to support projects coming out of you any library in the state that wants to submit a grant application. And we have um, various categories because the feds, of course, have, um, have give us some guidance about how they want to see these dollars used and the impact they want them to have. And so we craft our grant categories around those desires of the federal government. And um, we did just have the deadline for um, grant applications for this year at the end of February. I'll tell you more about that in just a sec. The big news here is that the um, legislation for this money it comes to the Institute of Museum and Library Services, or IMLS. That legislation is up for reauthorization at the federal level next year in 2015, which means they have to, there has to be a vote saying, yes, we want to continue to fund this, um, I don't know what you'd call it, a division or a section or this part of state, of federal government, and we want them to continue to do the work that they're doing. Um, so there may be greater, a greater need for advocacy efforts next year, and that's the only reason I'm mentioning that. Um, so our grant applications, this year around, we had 60 grant applications that we received, and 17 of those were in our new category for innovation grants. And I'm excited about that category because that really is, it doesn't have to be new on the face of the planet, but you know, if it's something that's new to you, uh, we'd, we're interested in getting a project application for it and perhaps funding it. Uh, the review process has already begun, and the, we have a committee 
of librarians from around the state who advise us, the LSTA Advisory Committee. They will be coming to Raleigh next week and they will be doing their review. So we have multi-level review, staff review, and then um, I review, and then we go to the advisory committee. So a lot of people look at these um, grants. Of the applications received this year, four were from community colleges, 12 were from private academic institutions, eight were from the UNC system, and 36 were from public libraries. So let me give you a little advice about how to get one of these grants. I would encourage you to start thinking now about next year. It is not too soon. What do your users need? Listen to yourself and when you say, gee, wouldn't it be nice if we could, and then fill in the blank, that could be an idea for an LSTA project. Here's a hint. If you go to this page, and we're going to give you all of the URLs at the end of this. Um, well, there it is. Jeffrey's on top of it. If you go to our LSTA Grant Awards page for last year, down at the bottom you see the little blue box says Library, Location, and Award. If you click on any award listed there, and it's every, every uh, grant that we uh, funded last year will be in one giant list there, then that will take you into the list of abstracts for those grants. And they're in there by alphabetical order. So there's Bladen County Library right up at the top and a description of their project. This is just to get your juices flowing and to get you thinking about, wow, they funded this project last year. I would like to do something similar. Maybe I could use this as a springboard, or even contact Bladen County and say, hey, give me some advice. How did you do this? We want to give this money away. And we can't do it if you guys don't apply for it. So I hope you will. Another resource that we have for you is Ray Oldham, our LSTA consultant. She will advise you. She will give you um, just really good guidance on selecting a project and filling out that application. She even will review applications. So um, I think the best way to be successful in getting your hands on some of this money is to start thinking early about how you might use it to improve things in your library for your users. Uh, moving on, well, one of the statewide projects that's funded with this federal money is the NCpedia or the North Carolina Online Encyclopedia. We're adding to this resource every single day. This is very heavily used by school children in the state because we have the most comprehensive listings about state symbols that you'd ever want to see. And we get really hilarious comments from kids, too, about how we helped them get an A or at least not flunk out. So some of the um, things that are included in the NCpedia, other than just articles about North Carolina, are um, things that come to us from the UNC Press. And so that includes, right now we're putting in uh, NC Gazetteer information, and that is every place name that you can imagine. I've looked up the most obscure place names I've been able to come up with, and they are all in there. So I'm pretty impressed. The Encyclopedia of North Carolina, the Dictionary of North Carolina Biography, and we're just working on the, we're going to be working on the North Carolina Portrait Index as well. So there's a lot of information in there, and it's growing. We've got 5,534 5, entries, over 6,000 images. So this can be a really good resource for um, school children and adults. Moving on, this is a, uh, the NCpedia is, comes out of the actual library portion of the state library. That's called the Government and Heritage Library. And it is, we have shelves, we have staff, and we serve state uh, employees, genealogists, and anybody interested in North Carolina history. I just wanted to highlight some of their collections because these are useful to perhaps your users and they're available to them as well. So we have digital collections that are available to anyone and the 
the uh, collection of the GHL really does center on North Carolina history and genealogy. Information about the government, the history of the state, including the people who have lived in this state. So we have family records, state government publications. Explore the topics are interesting because we gather a lot of um, disparate topics together, such as, you know, in one place, agriculture, government, Hispanic heritage. And very, very popular are our historic newspapers. You can order these for your patrons through ILL, and um, they are extremely popular with genealogists as well as researchers. So over 2,000 newspapers have been published in North Carolina since the first newspaper appeared in New Bern in 1751, and many of those have been microfilmed and are available for your use. And speaking of genealogy, we've got an exciting project going on right now here at the State Library, and we're doing that in partnership with Wake Forest University. And that is we're working on a MOOC, or a multi, oh, you know, I should have looked this up. It's multi-something online course and um, about basic genealogy. And so we're excited about uh, working on this with them. We're hoping to have up to 5,000 participants, and I hear that the more participants that take the, um, the MOOC, the better off, the better it is for whatever reason. Has anybody ever taken, you know, participated in a MOOC? Thanks, Jeffrey. Massive open online course. I've heard about them, but I've never taken one. But um, Wake Forest has done a couple already, and They've had massive numbers of people taking. Their first one was like two or 3,000 people, which just blows my mind. OK, I'm going to move on to another section of the State Library now, and that is the Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. And I mention this every time I get a chance, because really, y'all, just a fraction of the eligible population use this service. And this is a special public library designed to serve people with visual handicaps or with physical handicaps that make it difficult for them to hold the book. It's completely free. The materials are mailed from the library here in Raleigh out across the state to the patrons. And the, the patrons mail them back. It's all totally free, free matter for the blind. They've got a Cracker Jack collection and some reader advisor staff that help the patrons pick what they want to read next. We would love to increase the usage of this service. So if you see somebody in your library that's perhaps, perhaps has read most of your non-print books, they don't have to be blind. If they, you just have a visual, if they just need large print books, they can qualify. This library has a collection of large print books that they will mail to your patron. So if you've got somebody that's read every large print book in your collection, you might suggest that they uh, try out this service. I have seen uh, that the name of this place can be a, um, a barrier. I mean, I actually heard a patron say, oh, I couldn't do that. I'm not blind. Well, they don't have to be blind. They just have to have a vision problem. Um, so let's move on now to some of the things that are going on in library development, which is another section of the State Library. The NC Cardinal Project I've already referred to as one of our statewide projects that is supported with federal money. Uh, the news there is that the latest libraries to join are listed right there. I think we had five join in this past year. We've got five libraries who have applied to join in 1415. The counties that are in red and the dots that are in red are either county or municipal libraries who have already joined Cardinal. Uh, circulation among all libraries to date is over 12 million items. Uh, active patrons are over a million. And the great thing about being a participant in Cardinal is that you can share materials 
to and from all of the li other libraries in the consortium. So we are shipping books all over the state right now. And the monthly um, transits for March, that was 127,000. So we're really moving um, this uh, books all over the state, and people love it. What I love is that you can be living in Macon County, way over in the west, and heading down to you know, the coast for your vacation and walk into any library in Beaufort County and check out a book with your library card. And we've got some great examples of the library cards. That one on the top, this picture doesn't do us justice, but it's pristine white and it's got that cute little cardinal on it. Who wouldn't want to have that card? So that's um, a shared card by Cleveland County and the Moody Memorial Library in Cleveland County. So both of them have the same shared library card. But that card will check out at any Cardinal Library in the state. We've got any questions or comments so far, or should I just keep forging ahead? Okay. I will forge ahead. I'm going to talk now about continuing education. The State Library is offering a lot of courses, and they are all advertised on the train station, which is where we list everything that we offer and that even that other people offer that we think you might be interested in. So, and it's all kinds of training, not just our face-to-face -face classes, but actually this update webinar was listed on the train station. Um, and just a whole host of uh, opportunities are there. So I encourage you to go look at that. If you're interested, if you can remember to go look at the train station every so often, you'll stay abreast of what's being offered. If you want to nudge, then you might want to sign up for the CE list serve because that is where you can get CE announcements that will drop right into your mailbox. So you don't have to remember to go and look. It'll just land right in your lap and you can share them with others in your library or do whatever you like with them. So now I'm going to give you a heads up about some of the classes that are open and coming this, this spring. One thing I've, I'm hearing is that we're really having to beat the bushes for uh, registrants for some of these sessions. And I'm not sure quite why that is if people are having a hard time getting away from, you know, from where the desk and getting coverage or what. But um, if you can help us get the word out about these, we would really appreciate it. Oh, there's the train station. And you can see, so we've got the calendar is where they're all listed in a calendar format, but we have conferences, webinars, NC Live classes, because we do training for NC Live, in-person workshops, and self-paced online workshops. So you got a bunch to choose from there. So I'm going to start off with some of the NC Live training that we're doing um, coming up here, actually this month. So we've got... Um, We've developed a partnership with Blink, that's the business librarians of NCLA. And you can see that two of the Blink librarians are presenting the NC Live Business Workshop. And this uses a hands-on case study approach and uh, will really get uh, the participants up to date on using uh, business resources in the NC Live um, product. Uh, it's a full-day technology workshop. There's no registration fee, and we're even going to give you a free lunch. So how can you say no? Um, the next two sessions are coming up, you can see, uh, very shortly here in April. And we got some great reviews. We just did uh, this workshop earlier this week, I think. And um, it's some, somebody said, it was my first time using many of the resources presented. I feel as if they were covered in a manner that would make me not only more likely to work with them on my own, but even comfortable sharing those work resources. Somebody else said, excellent workshop. Using a case study made everything flow together very nicely and made it easier to understand. So um, I think these librarians are doing a really good job presenting this material. And um, so if you need... Uh, 
a refresher on how to serve your business customers, I would encourage you to sign up for those or get tell your coworkers about it. Registration closes on Monday because we have to order the, the lunches from the caterer. Um, so time is running short on those. Another category of NC Live workshop that we're offering is NC Live Health. And this is offered by Brenda Linares, one of our other partner trainers from UNC Health Sciences Library. There are the next two sessions. And again, we're going to feed you great comments about, I work at Allied Health Campus. I will use everything I learned. Um, I will use both the content and some of the presentation techniques in future workshops that I present. This was an excellent presentation. I'm happy I came, and I'm shocked that this high-quality workshop was free. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She didn't say anything about the lunch, but anyway, these are good workshops to get you up and running on the health resources on the NC Live uh, website. We also have NC Live Advanced, and this is taught by one of our master trainers, Martha Sink. Um, there are two sessions that are coming up uh, in May, uh, free half-day workshops on advanced search technique techniques. So things like how to use EBSCO's alerts, folders, and search history, and how to locate usage data. Uh, some of the comments from the prior sessions we've presented are, I'm so glad to have learned how to help patrons from other libraries use their libraries in C Live. Or this workshop covered more in-depth searching and content on NC Live. I attended the basics and learned a lot, but this answered many questions I have encountered while utilizing NC Live since the basics training. So if you're ready to take that next step, you might want to drop, uh, sign up for one of those classes. And finally, NC Kids uh, focuses on age-appropriate NC Live resources for kids from 0 to 18. You may think there's nothing on there for kids, but there really is. Um, some of these are already full, but we do have some space left at these two sessions. So there's more information on the train station about those if you want to sign up for either of those, on all of these. So what else do we have going on? Well, we have some something called the Wednesday webinars. And these are about data and using data. So this past Wednesday, we uh, debuted Surveys 101 and Methodology and Good Questions. We had, I think, 30 people that attended that. And that was part one of two. That has was like this one. It was um, recorded. And it's already up on our website at that um, you can see where that's posted. Uh, we're going to be offering part two of Surveys 101 in May. And uh, these are presented by Joyce Chapman. And she does a crackerjack job. You can register at the train station for these. Um, I'm going to be showing some of the public library data dashboards here in a minute. And Joyce has worked on those. So we'll be circling back around to data. Um, so here we go. The public library data dashboards are located right there on our website. This is a tool built for public libraries to help them make the case. Why is it that what they do is important? How do they prove what they do? How do they measure what they do? How can they use data to help them uh, send a message to local government? So the data dashboards contain data that could be useful to any library along with the tools that are useful. So I'm assuming that most of you are, um, and this I could be wrong, most of you are familiar with the advocacy tools and the reports and the resources. These are some of the heat maps that show uh, information about North Carolina and infographics that Joyce has put together to show um, how public libraries are assisting uh, patrons with workforce development. Uh, and another one she put together is how we are spending those federal dollars that come to the state library. Today, I wanted to talk about the dig into data portion of the website and what you might find there that could be of interest not only to you, but to your users. And this is 
actual just interesting data about North Carolina, not about libraries necessarily, but about the people in our state, their health, uh, how many people are uninsured, what are county health rankings, uh, NC County budget and tax information, a lot of data about children, how many children live in poverty, what are their reading scores, what are their math scores, um, data about homelessness, and not on this screen capture, but if you were on the website and scroll down a little bit, you would see Link or Login North Carolina that has over 900 data items for every county in the state. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is it could be of interest to your county manager. They might really be interested to know about this data. They may know about it already, but if not, it's something you could use to um, meet their information needs should they have one or to highlight a good job that the library is doing in meeting a county need. So if your county has a lot of, you know, people are high and uninsured and you count how many people you help with insurance or um, the reading scores are really low and you can tie your summer reading program to that. Um, these are, are ways to help you make a case to give you background information. So even if you don't think you have an immediate use for it, it's interesting to just go and look at Noodle Around because there's just so much stuff there. I'm going to move on to the center for the book. You know, we do it all here at the State Library. So we're doing this hard numbers measuring stuff. And then we turn around and we've got the letters about literature contest. Um, 2,000 students in North Carolina entered this contest and it it's where they're encouraged to write a letter to an author, living or dead, about an impact that the author has had on them. Um, so uh, we have a contest within the state to select the, the best entries from among those 2,000 uh, entries. And then those are forwarded to the federal, to the nationwide level, and there's a national contest. So the winning letters in North Carolina have been sent on to the national competition. I don't think we've ever won, but every year I cross my fingers. The State Library also sponsors Let's Talk About It book discussion programs uh, with the North Carolina Humanities Council, and they're our partner on these programs. Um, the latest topic that's available in the Let's Talk About It series is the Muslim Journeys. Uh, which is an interesting, um, it's called Muslim Journeys American Stories, and it's about Muslims. And it's being offered this spring at Davie County Library at Braswell Memorial. And then Jackson County Lib uh, Library has, is going to be hosting it in the fall. If you're interested in hosting a Let's Talk About It series and the Muslim Journeys um, series, Contact Molly Westmoreland and she can get you set up. Um, the Humanities Council provides a scholar to help with those programs. So they're pretty, they're pretty meaty. The one that I participated in, I was kind of surprised at how much, uh, how deeply we got into the subject. Um, another activity of the Center for the Book is they are involved with the Literary Hall of Fame, which is located in Southern Pines. Uh, they have just announced the new inductees to the Hall of Fame, and you see the names there. And there will be a um, ceremony down at the Wayman Center this fall, which is um, when they will actually be inducted. Uh, what else? I'm moving back to NC Live because this is an important year. Every three years, the, resource, the resources in NC Live are reselected or selected. So they, they contract for the resources on a three-year cycle. And the three years are coming up to be over, which means we have to either recontract or drop resources, and it's a good time to pick up other resources. So what I'm hearing from Tim Rogers, the executive director, is that with no new funding to NC Live, some cuts in access are likely just because stuff's going to be more expensive. 
Um, so that we're going to be spending most the rest of two, 2014, and this is really actually already started, asking libraries, what is it that you use? What do you like? What do you not use? And looking at all the data, and it's on the NC Live website. If you've ever been over on the left there, you can go and see exactly what your usage is for your library or for your community of interest or all public libraries or even all NC Live. So they have a lot of data there about what's being used. And they also realize that some resources are more heavily used by publics, public libraries, and some are more heavily used by academic libraries. And it's a, kind of a hard job, but they have a subcommittee, the Resource Advisory Committee. And they are the, the group that actually review the data and make the recommendations back to the Librarians Council of NC Live about what to retain, what to drop, and what to start. So the new contracts will begin in January 1. So all of this review and data analysis and selection, all that discussion, is going to be taking place this summer and fall. If you have any feedback, I encourage you to share it. Um, you can share it with me. You can send it directly to NC Live. Our representative, the Public Library Representative for its Advisory Council, is um, uh, Ruth Ann Copley from Davidson County Public Library. And she will be the one in there pitching for public libraries and the resources that we use. So um, it's an, uh, it, this only comes around every three years, so I think it's kind of important, and I hope you will speak up. Of the four community of, communities of interests, communities of interest, excuse me, involved in NC Live, three are academic libraries. There's the UNC system, the community college system, and the private academics. They all have very similar wants and needs at least in terms of the age and uh, of their users. The public libraries are sort of like an outlier. We're sort of like the, the only ones. So sometimes when you get into those meetings, it's not three against one, but there's more parity across what the community colleges are needing. So I think it's, I mean, what the uh, academics are needing. So I think it's really important that the public libraries speak with one voice and, and take it seriously when when we're asked to provide feedback. I think there may be a survey going out right now, in fact. So if you see it, I hope you will respond. Um, another NC Live project is this homegrown ebook project. And I don't know if you all have heard about this, but this is a pilot project that's going on this year. And what it's all about is ebooks. Tim Rogers, the director of NC Live, is negotiating one-on-one -on -one with North Carolina Presses. Now, why are we doing that? Why is he doing that? Because the big boy, the big six presses, don't want to deal with a consortium like NC Live. They don't want to deal with any statewide entity whatsoever. That includes the state library. They want every library to come to them individually, one by one by one. Well, we think there's great, great efficiencies and cost savings to be realized when we work together as a group, and that's obvious through the NC Live model. That is not that doesn't hold any sway with ebook publishers, and they're not interested. So, this is a test in a number of ways. So, first of all, it's a test to see uh, how well we can work with our NC publishers, and some of these are fairly small publishers that maybe don't really have an ebook presence right now. So there's a bit of education going on there. Um, it's uh, uh, a test of the platform for these books, because as you know, that's, um, that's half the battle, is finding a platform to put the books on. What we're doing is putting together a collection of about 1,000 titles that will be fiction and nonfiction, and we're going to make them available libraries in North Carolina. All types. So this is it's because it's coming out of NC Live. It includes academic and public libraries. What uh, Tim is doing is asking libraries to 
uh, pledge a little bit of money in the pilot to get this started. Uh, we're going to, NC Live will own these titles in perpetuity. So after the pilot is over, these titles aren't going away. They will be there for your use going forward. And another interesting thing about this is that there's going to be uh, unlimited checkouts. So if somebody already has a title checked out, that's not going to stop you from checking it out too. And that is very different from most models. So this is a test. And we're going to see how it works. I'm excited because we think I think it's going to give us a platform we might be able to spring off of that uh, and to offering other things as well. Um, this is going to uh, give all libraries access to some content. And we do have public libraries in this state that are not currently offering ebooks. So at least they will be able to offer something to their patrons. And um, we're just going to test it out. So it is a test project and it is very much homegrown. So I hope you'll participate and give feedback because that's how uh, NC Live is going to know if it's something that's going to work or not. So how do you stay up with all the many things that are going on at the State Library at any given time? Well, there's a couple of ways, and one of the ways is our LD blog. This has been very popular, and I if you want to stay up on general state library news, I encourage you to um, sign up for this uh, blog. Our most popular post to date is the one that's right in front of you, which is, uh, the Jason Griffey workshops. Those were sellouts, uh, very, very popular, and um, so we are um, looking at trying to offer some other um, sessions just as popular as those workshops that he did on technology. This is sort of a general blog, and it will cover a lot of different topics of interest to all types of libraries. Now, we, we have another blog that's a little more targeted, and that is our GHL, or Government and Heritage Library blog. They talk a lot about state documents. Um, they give you the news about NCpedia and uh, the information that they're doing, uh, about what they're doing. One of the things they're doing is a uh, county of the week. They're highlighting a different county every week uh, with lots of links. They talk about the county and its history, and then they have lots of links out. So that's fun, especially when they do your county. So here's where I want to ask you to do something for me, because I, that's all the news I have. Um, so I wanted to find out if there was anything that we can do for you. Specifically, if there's any particular topics or presenters you want to hear for continuing education. If you have any questions or comments about our federal funding, or want to know more, or if there's any other programs that you would like to hear about today or find out more about on our website or in any other way. So this is your chance to type in that box. Suzanne is typing. I don't know if you all saw, but the, um, our continuing education is advised by a continuing education advisory committee. We get them together twice a year. They come to Raleigh and they give us advice. So um, we're not just picking these workshops out of a hat. We really are trying to get feedback from you all. Do we have a lending collection of professional resource books for librarians? That's an interesting question, Suzanne, because it just came up the other day. We have an old collection because um, back in the day, our collection in the uh, state library used to be a backup collection for public libraries. Uh, over time, we realized we couldn't do that. And so we have moved away. That was like back in the 60s that we actually would back up your you know, public library collection. So we have some, some of the older titles. 
I don't know, we don't have the new stuff because we're not actively um, adding to that collection. I know I have some books of my own, as do some of the other consultants, and it just depends on, you know, what you want. We might, somebody here might have it and be willing to send it to you, but um, I don't know that I would recommend our collection as being um, the end-all be-all because it's going to be very out of date. I hope that answers that. I wish I wish we did, but we don't. Um, Lynn, looking for good customer service. Okay, I'm going to make a note of that. And it's that, I mean, there's lots of reasons why, in my experience, most librarians on the public service desk are pretty good about working with people. So it's not that they don't have good people skills. Uh, there are other factors at play. So can you tell me more about um, what you're looking at? Oh, and guess what? I just got some input from Laurie Special about the Youth Services Professional Collection. That is up to date. So, Suzanne, if your question has to do with Youth Services, you're in luck. Okay? And Laurie can help you. Lynn, we have longtime staff who need ongoing. <laughs> Aren't you polite? Okay, I'll, uh, I will uh, make a note of that. Long time staff. And are they able to, that's really the kind of thing you have to do face to face. Okay. Um, okay. Got it. What else can we do for you guys? What else would be helpful to help you do your job better? Okay, just seeing that somebody's typing. Ah, uh, okay, social media policy. Hmm. Jeffrey might be able to weigh in on that. I'm going to toss that one his way. Do you have uh, an update on SRP software availability to libraries? Yes, Laurie's working on it hard today. In fact, we just sent this afternoon a memo to uh, the governor's office asking if we can get a kid-friendly picture to use as a badge in our program. So she is um, working away on it. Uh, the deadline for the governor's picture was like next week, so it's coming fast. Um, but that's about as much as I know. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be cool to, to see how that software works. And if you want me to, Becky, I can run down the hall and ask Laurie, do you, have a, do you want to know when you're going to get your hands on the summer reading software. Wanda's saying that a webinar will be on the 23rd about it. So maybe you can attend that. It's coming soon. Yeah. Do you know about the webinar on the 23rd? Let me make a note and I will um, I'll get, we'll send you something, Becky, okay? Um, info about that webinar. I don't know if that's on the train station or not, but we'll, we'll get you that data. Anybody else want anything that I can send them? Oh, Wanda's saying that the info will be sent out today. And Christy's typing. Yay. This almost feels like a conversation, y'all.
Another thing we'd be interested, if you travel anywhere, or you go to any conferences like the ARSL conference, and you see a good presenter, we're always interested in hearing about um, anything that you see. Okay, Rhea, we'll send it to you too. Uh, yes, you know what, Christy, we just had a we just had a researcher downstairs who was so thrilled with us, and he went home. He was from out of state, and he sent this glowing letter about how helpful everybody was on staff, and his coup de grace. I mean, the highest compliment he could play, pay us was that all of our microfilm machines worked too. So he's obviously a pretty good researcher. He's been out and about and knows how many times you go into a library and three of the four machines aren't working. Let me ask them um, what they use because they don't seem to go down a lot. Uh, and I can just find out what what um, microfilm machines they use. Okay. And you know, that's a microfilm machine. If you're doing a special program about genealogy or something and you want to apply for some LSDA funding, you could actually get a new microfilm reader as part of your project plan. Okay, so Suzanne, um, nobody's weighed in on the social media policy. I'll throw that out to staff and see if we can find anything for you on that. Uh, I'm wondering if the library directors had a discussion about that recently on their website. And if they did, we can um, get you some of that information. Okay, anything else, y'all, before we say adieu this afternoon? Going, going, gone, last chance. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. We'll be in touch. And yeah, happy Easter to you, too.